Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, some sunlight coming in a fun way. So we are not in the garage because it is negative 30 something. Um, and I don't know which of these is going to go up first, but I'm giving the same intro as I did for the BetterBot project update uh, because I'm recording together and um, they're both kind of the same idea, which is catching up with new things. So uh, in this one, we're going to take the clockwork expansions, the original four, the OGs, and we are introducing the four director's cut versions of those factions. So if you are like me and you've been playing with stuff out of the clockwork box because it's beautiful and um, it's nice and easy, no shame there. I'm not saying that I'm going to make these changes forever. I think the Better Bot Project ones makes the most sense to stick with the most up-to-date version. This will be more of a me uh, giving my thoughts on the changes that were presented by Benjamin Schmaus in the... Um, I'm not saying I'm not sure if I'm saying that right uh, by Benjamin in the director's cut versions, which you can choose to use or you can choose to continue using the uh, published clockwork ones. So uh, there are going to be some board changes, some card changes. Um, so with that, let's get to what's new. OK, so um, let's start with the mechanical marquee. Um, this is the only one that I've played with so far, uh, and it was I really like the changes. Um, so let's let's talk about them. Birdsong, or I guess name and berries are the same. Birdsong is also the same. Um, in daylight, this is going to be the first change. Uh, which actually, let's go over to the side because there is now difficulty levels, which are like the better bot project. Um, so you are, if you're using the director's cut, you will no longer use the difficulty level cards. Um, you're using these numbers, like the Better Bot Project factions. So that's the first change. In recruit, instead of four warriors all the time, it's going to be level. So either three, four, or five, depending on if you're playing beginner, expert, or masters. Build is the same. Move is the same, but there is a clarification that warriors will never cascade move um you know go from high priority <clears throat> excuse me high priority to low um but there will be no, no situation where someone like goes from clearing one to four and then from four to seven and because they just keep moving so it's um you know when you move them i don't know lay them down to show that they've already moved like they're tired and they can't move again uh expand has been bumped so that is the end of daylight expand is now the first step of evening and um, if you did not place a building this turn and would score less than three victory points discard and draw a new order card then repeat daylight you can only expand once per turn so this just this does a couple things it i think clarifies makes it a little bit more user friendly because expand is not part of daylight it's not just going to like loop it forever it's only going to get to it once, so it's cleaner that it's outside of daylight. But it also clarifies that, you know, if by no fault of the cats they can't place a building because they've already placed all six of their sawmills, for instance, that does not proc expansion because that would be crazy. So, um, yeah, I, li I like that those changes a lot. Uh, scoring works the same. Discarding works the same. Escalated daylight. It, battle is the same. Recruit is also uh, a change where they put in level number as opposed to four. Oh, and a change I didn't say in the other recruit, which I also really like, is um, first of all that they're well, I guess it's kind of weird because there's clearing tie thing which is just the normal basic clearing tie so I don't know why they put that in there for high priority, but <clears throat> anytime you can't place a warrior for every two warriors that couldn't be recruited, you get a victory point. Because Mechanical Marquis sometimes does really like ramp up uh, their presence on the board, and you're they're no longer penalized by that, by just like balling up in a few different clearings. Now they're actually scoring victory points when that happens. Um, for build, same rule, but they just kind of streamlined it a little bit. It's not doesn't take up as much space. Um, move also works the same. It just clarifies that each warrior can only do it one time. So same 
same helpful thing that uh, we had for expansion earlier. Um, Iron Will, instead of whenever you recruit in Escalated Daylight, place double the warriors, um, it has totally changed. Now expand will happen twice per turn instead of only once. So that, that feedback loop that of expansion that cats sometimes got into last time, this allows you to get a little bit of that um, you know, twice a turn instead of like as many times as it takes. So for Fortified, the change is pretty subtle. It now says your buildings each take two hits in, to remove in battle. Um, taking single hits with a building has no effect. Um, I believe I'm taking this to mean, you know, if you're able to do damage in some other means um, outside of battle, which none are specifically coming to mind. Uh, I'm sure some of you could, could come up with some if, if they're in your mind. Um, but specifically in battle, they take two hits, uh, but not outside of battle. Okay, moving on to Electric Eerie. Uh, so everything at the top is still the same. Uh, name, berries, good to go. Uh, Birdsong is also still the same. Reveal, craft, add. So far, so exactly the same. Okay, so the Decree has a couple little changes and a couple just clarifications um, for there's a little bit of wording change in the actual resolution of the decree thing but still works the same recruit is interesting everything works the same except when resolving the the bird column recruit level which this is their difficulty again no difficulty card so for beginner one less warrior expert the same master one more warrior uh, they will always have uh, their two viziers, but depending on their difficulty level, they will, um, you know, that'll change uh, in terms of recruiting, which I think is a pretty cool uh, change that they did. So for moving, um, this is interesting because it wouldn't, it says, you know, the matching clearing you roll with the most eerie warriors but it says do not consider clearings which no warrior would move so there might be a big battle front where your warriors are going to be trapped because there are a bunch of people that they need to stick behind to rule that clearing in which case it would then go cascading down to look for others um which i think is neat because that's kind of making the robot seem to pay more attention to like back routes to get to where they want um battling is the the same as before but they remove the little thing that says that the defender is the player with the most buildings including zero because that was already cleared in the um tiebreaker so you don't need it there um the build step is the same evening is the same the roost track is the same turmoil is the same so there are a few minor tweaks um, to Daylight, but a relatively major tweak to how uh, uh, you know, di difficulty levels work. Um, yeah, have not played as this one yet, but I'm excited to see how those changes work out. All right, Electric Eerie card differences. Uh, nobility is a, a different one. So now it says, whenever you fall into turmoil, you do not lose victory points. Instead, you score one victory point per bird card in the decree. Um, so that's that's the entirety of the second part of nobility, except it it removes the downfall to it. Uh, where it used to say, you now fall into turmoil if you can't place a roost or a warrior. Because remember, the uh, electric eerie only goes into turmoil if they can't place a roost. Um, so this made them susceptible to one other pathway to turmoil uh but the new version does not have that so that is a buff to electric eerie for sure automated alliance so uh top line things work just the same uh name is the same all the berries are the same uh, but as soon as we get down to the actual phases of the turn things are different so i guess I'm not, 
never noticed it. The old, the, the actual published clockworks just say reveal an order card. And now they all say reveal top card of the deck as order card. I guess I don't really know why that needed to be clarified, because I thought that was covered in the Law of Root Botics, but, hmm. Uh, so, Revolt works the same way. Again, it's sort of like the um, Dummy Duchy. It just kind of orders its wording a little bit differently. So it just kind of starts with the pretty important if-then statement of if a base is not in play and then blah, 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 goes through all the rest of the base coming out of the port, as opposed to leaving it to the end. It says, to revolt, the order base must be on this board, which, yeah, I think makes more sense because just immediately alerts the player that that should be there. Public pity has moved, and this is a pretty big nerf. Uh, a decent-sized one, not enormous, but um, because... In the old board, if you had not revolted in Birdsong, you are going to spread sympathy right away. So if if you draw a bird card and you're going to do the, um, you know, more powerful spread sympathy, you also get to, you know, spread sympathy with public pity. So that was kind of like their bird turns were really kind of epic. So now public pity has been moved to the end um, after the surprise revolt. So that's pretty nice for, you know, everybody else. <laughs> Not so nice for the automated alliance. So spread sympathy actually uh, changes some things. Um, so for clearing tie, it's interesting. If the order card is a bird, place it in the lowest priority clearing. Otherwise, avoid clearings with three or more warriors of a single player, then place in an ordered clearing. And then, you know, priority breaks ties. And I like the, the change to cannot spread because it makes it clearer as to what it's trying to do. It's not that um, it's saying, you know, if if there are no... It, the rules worked out this way in the, in the past with the old wording, but this just makes it clearer that what it's trying to alert you to is if you have no sympathy uh, tokens to spread, then it's going to get five extra picture points. Um, surprise revolt, same. Uh, public pity, also same, but just a totally different place. Um, organize, recruit, discard are also the same. Base, uh, bases are the same. Um, down on the sympathy track, this is interesting, and I think it's kind of nice because you no longer have to worry about martial law, since they've already wrapped in the natural avoidance of three or more enemies of a single type in a clearing into where they can place sympathy. So you don't have to worry about martial law as a separate rule that's way down at the bottom. Um, because it's already in the clearing tiebreakers. Placement limits still the same. And then, um, mm, excuse me, um, so I was about to <laughs> difficulty level, I was like, wait a second, I haven't talked about that yet. So organize is different in evening. It is no longer a hard cap at three warriors for organizi organizing. Um, for beginner, it is four or more. For expert, three or more. Master, two or more. You know, the lower the difficulty level, the higher the threshold to actually organize and spread that extra sympathy. So that's cool. And then boss mode is still the same rule that boss mode's always been. For automated alliance, uh, veterans and popularity are different. So in veterans, it says, uh, the old one said, gain the guerrilla warfare ability of the Woodland Alliance. And then it reminds you what that is. Um... And then in uh, the new version, it says, In battle as defender, use the same die result as the attacker. Both players use the higher die to determine hits rolled. That's really interesting. So it's no longer, you're no longer getting the, you know, um, meatbag version of the automated alliance guerrilla warfare. You're getting this other, I mean, it's not going to give the big swings that guerrilla warfare could because, you know, a 3-0 and o would be 3-0 and o for you as defender. With this new one, it would just be both sides get 3. So you're, you're essentially 
your your you know counter punch is going to be as strong as their punch. Um, so that's an interesting change. Popularity um, used to be enemies do not score victory points for removing sympathy tokens. And now it says enemies can only score one victory point per turn for removing sympathy tokens, which I think is really nice because if popularity was in the game, it just removed a huge portion of what it means to actually like fight against the Woodland Alliance. To not be able to score those victory points at all was just a real big bummer. So I like that change a lot. Last but not least, Vagabot. Um, still same name, still same berries up at the top, still the same bird song. Um, so change in daylight, they actually have the rule about exhausting items to move here as opposed to them just being in the law of root products and for you to have to rem remember. So that's good. <laughs> Makes it a little cleaner. So yeah, explore is just a little bit shorter because they don't have to have that rule about exhausting to move. For quest, they removed the reminder that you ignore card text on the quest, which I think is a little weird because they had extra space. And overall, it seems like the director's cut in a lot of cases, even if the effect remains the same, it moves more towards clarity. And so this is it's kind of weird that they wouldn't um, they wouldn't include that. But uh, Quest has also got a buff. It's it's now two victory points instead of one, which is pretty notable because questing for the Vagabond in the past was not a very viable way of getting points. Aid is completely differently. Um, so for those who, I think it was Rubble Rumble 3, remember the like punch out, just like absurd ending where the Vagabond just bought everything and wound up uh, just like king making <laughs> at the very end. So that is no longer a thing. So they're, they're hard capped at, uh, at getting one item. They, they will no longer exhaust everything to get all the items they possibly can, which I think is cool because, you know, that was just sort of absurd. It also clarifies that they can move to a different clearing. It's not just the one in their clearing. So it makes it more versatile, but also less swingy. So win-win on that one. Um, so battle is exactly the same. Uh, they just moved... A little bit of the no it's, it's just a different format <laughs> um, they didn't even change where things were worded uh, special is also the same so then in evening we have the instance of our difficulty level so again no longer using the cards difficulty is beginner expert master of three four or five so you're going to refresh level items so you're refreshing level items. If you have no damage items, refresh two more. So remember, in the past, it was if you have any damage items, refresh four. If you have none, refresh six instead. So four was the old rule has now become the middle of the road expert. Beginner and master are up or down, or vice versa. Um, and then the rest of the evening is the exact same. So uh, a pretty big change to the the Vagabot is the actual ordering of, of, of actions for their Daylight Actions table. So Fox has become Explore Special Battle. Oh, okay, so now I see. So Battle was in all of them, but it was at a different place. And I remember talking about that in my teaching video because it made it kind of interesting based on where battle was um you know because you could aid and the battle is after that or it's just an interesting thing that that battle is at a different spot for each one and now i think probably just to help clarify they battle is the last action of all four suits so um the fox is still the same it's still explore um, battle and special is just that the order has adjusted. Rabbit is different. It used to be battle repair special. It is now special aid battle. So repair was taken out. Repair is actually no longer part of um, the daylight actions at all. 
the only repairing will be, you know, day, uh, and the stuff during daylight. Mouse and birds were both the four, uh, the four action suits, which is no longer a thing. Mouse is now just quest aid battle, so repair has been removed, and bird is explore quest battle, so aid has been removed. So bird has kind of is weird because before bird and mouse were equal roughly equal in terms of their like volatility for other players and now bird seems to be roughly on on par with all the rest of them there's not really that notable uh bump up in difficulty that the other uh, factions have with their bird cards okay so the battle track is the same except it has this uh, clarification that items on the track cannot be exhausted, removed, or damaged. So, unlike human players, where that is a thing that you can do, um, once they're on the battle track, they are just there. That is a thing that will remain for the rest of the game. And the rest of the, the board is the same. The satchel works the same. Character cards are the same. Um, and, like all the rest of them, they have the boss mode for co-op. Um, so that is the end of the uh, board uh, for that one. For uh, the Vagabond, our Tinker and Ranger have some changes to them. So the Tinker still acts entirely the same. His special action still looks for a craftable item. You still start the game with one fewer item. However, now when you craft that item with your special action, you don't get any points. Um, so that's just kind of giving them a little bit of a of a nerf there. You still get the flexibility of it, but you don't get you know the point for it as well. Okay, so Ranger is a pretty big change. It still has the general effect of making them more resilient, but instead of before, um, you know, the special ability gave you that other time to slip into the forest. Now it is going to um, just always be helping you repair items. If you have any damaged items, repair one of them. Exhausted, unexhausted before exhausted. So, um, yeah, that's that's a pretty cool, um, you know, it already was helpful to keep them alive because it sent them into the, slipped into the forest if they needed it an extra time, but this way they don't even need to do that. As for helper, um, it used to say whenever you aid, score an extra victory point and the aided player draws two cards instead of one. Now it said, Whenever you aid, if there are no available items, move to aid the player with the lowest score and exhaust one item to score one victory point. The aided player draws one card. So it's it just makes it a little bit more uh, kind of nuanced and complicated. Like there's going to be more of an effect of this as opposed to just like, oh, you just do it better. Um, you get two points and they draw two cards, which I think is cool because it it more identifies with a player playing the Vagabond who's just like really interested in that part of it rather than just being better at it every time they do it now he's going to actually seek people out more um, to do the aid action. 